we are building on this amplitude modulation demo. It's double sideband suppressed carrier. And now the thing is, uh, oh, I guess before we do filtering, let's also do some synchronous demodulation. So what do we mean by synchronous demodulation? Uh, how do we do synchronous demodulation? Synchronous, right, I guess the key word is sync. So we, we need a, a sinusoid that's in sync with the original carrier, right? So that just means it has to have the same phase and the same frequency as the original carrier. Basically, we have this VC. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here a new section, synchronous demodulation. So like I said, we're going to use that sinusoid, and we're going to multiply it by the AM signal. Right, so I'm going to use VC dot times phi phi. I need to use the uh, time domain signal, not the frequency domain signal. Which one do you think is the time domain one? Uh, yeah, lowercase. That's sort of the convention we're following. Because as you recall, when you do amplitude modulation, we get a factor of one half. Yeah, let's multiply by two. We can. Let's do it. Why not? Four. So. Uh, now the Fourier transform of this x fft little x we can put in the ts if we want why not let's put in the ts and uh, let's make a zero centric version that's right fft shift let's just uh, see how this looks just to make sure we're okay with it bringing up a new figure uh, like this <coughs> There's our zero-centric frequency that I put in, and then the abs of our zero-centric thing, favorite formatting things. And then we get tired of those favorite formatting things, so we just copy and paste from above. And uh, here's my new figure. Let's zoom in. I'm going to set the time scale. Again, how do I make the time scale better for the frequency scale? That's right. If I divide by F1, let's run that again. Uh, I'll run this. That, here's a nice thing about this publishing thing when you make these cells. If I go to publish, oh, maybe it's under editor. Run, I can just run this section instead of run the whole thing. So I run that section and there's my figure. But let's zoom in. What do we think a good scale is for me to zoom into? Maybe negative 100 to 100? That's, that's a nice start. So let's do xlim uh, 100. I'll just do negative 1 to one like that because I'm ultra lazy so if I just want to fix that then I just want to uh, change one number you need to say there's my new plot yeah, right it makes sense right because carrier frequency is 20 times f1 and we did we multiplied twice so we the first time we get you know positive and negative 20 and multiply again now we get positive negative 40 okay I'll make this uh, we'll go in closer let's go 60 uh, save it, run section, there it is. Yeah, is, it, is that okay? I mean, is that reasonable? Another thing we might expect, right, is that when you do the uh, synchronous demodulation, the two spectral copies add up at the origin, right, which is what we're seeing here. And then there's the others at two times the, the carrier frequency. So that, that's looking okay. So we, we think we believe that. And of course, let's just put in some labels. And so nice tab completion things there. And then uh, just run this section one more time, get us a plot. We've shown you so far, we, we made a signal, we used it to modulate a carrier, and then we use that same carrier for synchronous demodulation. If we wanted to recover the original signal, what else might we want to do? A low pass filter, right? So I'm going to show you one way to do the filtering here. Let's put in a new filtering section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable for the bandwidth. Stay, let's say for now that it's 15 times F1. This is the low pass filter cutoff frequency. In MATLAB we're going to make a digital filter and it's going to have an order 50. And this filter command likes us to specify a fractional cutoff. So let's I'll, I'll do that. This uh, we will call it XB, and uh, so it's a it's unitless. It's the filter fractional cutoff, and it's specified in bandwidth divided by 
the uh, frequency window divided by 2, filter fractional cutoff. You take the bandwidth and then you divide by the half frequency window. And then so we make the time domain filter. Maybe it's not time domain. I'm not sure what it is. It's just a, it's a filter object. That's all I know about it for, at the moment. So FIR1. So this creates a filter object. And then to do the filtering, we'll make a signal Y. So we're filtering our signal in the time domain with this digital filter that we've built. Hopefully we've removed the high frequency content. You know, the, those spectral copies at plus and minus uh, two times the carrier frequency. We could look at the time domain. Let's plot this. So let's do a subplot. Uh, figure, I'm plotting scaled time, our filtered signal, and X label. Making use of tab completion, very nice. Let's just uh, run this, see what happens. Uh, there's my figure. Isn't that fun? It's like, uh, there it is. We filtered it, looked at it in the time domain. Uh, maybe for nice comparison, plot the original message, run the section. They're not the same size, but what, why might that be? Yeah, we multiplied by a factor of four. Maybe I, maybe I forgot that we multiplied by another two somewhere. That's okay. See? Put in, change the 4 to a 2, no big deal, right? Um, one thing we might want to do, though, is uh, when you do your code and you run it over and over again, sometimes you'll get lots of figures that accumulate, so one thing that might be nice for you to do is uh, close all at the beginning, and so we could run that. Because things get bogged down, right, the more figures there are. There's, uh, yeah, look, there's my figure 4. So yeah, you can start to compare how well did we do. Maybe I won't show you here, but um, wouldn't it be nice to mark the position of the uh, cutoff frequencies on our filter? Yeah, just to, to mark in this in this uh, plot where the cutoff is, because then maybe we, we might think about, you know, what, what what if we changed the cutoff? We said, hey, that's a wide cutoff. What if we made it narrower? What, what do you think would happen? 